Yes, you read that title correct. I have three more player props for week six in the NFL, and yes, I am a degenerate, but today we're going to talk about those three player props plus our segment returning from last week, Make It Make Sense, where we talk about lines that, well, they don't make a whole lot of sense this weekend. What's going on? My name's Austin from Calling Our Shot. Welcome to the people that are new to the channel. Welcome to all the OGs out there. I appreciate you for tuning in. If you are new, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button down below. I'd be very thankful. Also, to all the newcomers, we have two other NFL Best Bets videos live. Number one, looks the thumbnail looks just like this one. It has my three favorite spread picks for this upcoming weekend. We've been crushing spreads this year. 74% win rate on spreads and over-unders and our, just our game picks. We've been crushing it. And number two, the second video live is our player props and parlays, the four Ps video where we talk about four more player props, including my biggest play of the weekend, a two-unit play. We have a money line parlay. We have a first touchdown score, which we've been hitting this season. Go check out both of those videos after this one. And lastly, you, well, you guys have a lot of call on our shot content to watch, but lastly, if you ever want a place to place player prop parlays, Go to Price Picks, sign up using our code COS, you get a 100% deposit match up to 100 bucks, and they have a free square live until Tuesday. Stephen Curry to score just one point on Tuesday. Look, Stephen Curry's gonna get that done. And if you put him into any of your parlays, that's already one leg down. Go take advantage of that, uh, plus that free square, plus the 100% deposit match. The details are in the description. There's also a link that might make it a little bit easier, but let's hop into one of my favorite player props this weekend. Another one we're adding, Mr. Kyler Murray, over 255 and a half passing yards, which is currently minus 115. On points bet I like this up to right around 260 and a half now this video won't have as many edits as my other videos do because we want to pump this out get this out to you guys as early as possible so put on your earphones listen up because you were going to throw a lot of stats at you but let's talk about seattle who will see uh, uh we'll see kyler murray go up against in Look, Kyler Murray hasn't faced a lot of bad defenses this year, but Seattle's going to be one of them as they have allowed the second highest passer rating this year. The only team worse than them was the uh, Las Vegas Raiders, who Kyler Murray already threw for 277 passing yards against. Now, Murray, while he's only over this line in two of five games this year, worth, worth noting the three teams they went under, the Panthers and Chiefs and Eagles, three decent defenses. The Panthers and Eagles both have pretty good secondaries, especially in the Seahawks. Well, their defense is not that elite. I mean, they've allowed the seventh most passing yards this season or the 26th fewest in the NFL. And then you look at the Seahawks. They've allowed a total of 430 total yards every single game. That's the most in the NFL. And when you look at the QBs that have faced the, you know, the Seahawks team, only two of them have hit this over in passing yards. They're giving up a ton of rushing yards, but you look at this, uh, this Cardinals roster, they don't have a lot of running backs healthy. In fact, you look at the three quarterbacks that all go under this line against the Seahawks, Jimmy G slash Trey Lance, Marcus Mariota, and Andy Dalton. All those guys had their rushing attacks absolutely berserk. You look at this Cardinals rushing attack, down James Conner, down Darrell Williams. Their main running back is going to be Eno Benjamin. If you know anything about Eno Benjamin, not really known as a guy that's going to pound you through the tackles. It's going to be a guy that's really going to be a receiving back, kind of like a Chase Edmonds that we saw, you know, obviously Chase Edmonds down Miami. So I think they're going to put the ball in Kyler's hands and let him throw it. And I think 255 and a half is not a really high line for Kyler. In fact, he's hit this over in 11 of his last 18 games dating back to last season. A couple of the game, I got rid of a couple games that he got injured in. So I really do think this is a high over under. We also look at Kyler. He's hit this over in two of the last three against the Seahawks. 240 yards in the last recent game, which was the one he missed it in. And the Seahawks are second to last in NFL in time of possession. They don't really last uh, they aren't on the field a whole lot of time. So we should see a high over under. Should see, you know, the Cardinals throwing at a good amount. Give me Kyler Murray. Give me his over 255 and a half passing yards. Now let's move on to another guy. Gabe Davis. We're taking his over 22 and a half yards for his longest reception. No, we're not taking his receiving yards, but you understand why I like this longest reception a little bit more. Currently minus 114 on FanDuel. I did see a couple books at 23 and a half. Fire me up. I'll take that there too. Now I am a sucker for Gabe Davis. I have the UCF flag behind me. Look, he's a UCF alumni just like myself, but I think Gabe Davis slowly, slowly turning into one of the best deep ball receivers the NFL has to offer. And last week, well, he cleared this over easily in the first quarter with a 98-yard reception. Then he had another deep one, which was a one-handed catch. And I just think he's, he's going to be pretty busy against the Chiefs in what we expect to be a higher-scoring game. Now, Davis, obviously, you, you would think back to the last game he played against the Chiefs in the playoffs. That was his illustrious four-touchdown game. And while I don't, maybe the Chiefs play a little bit more attention to him, they've still got Stephon Diggs on the other side. They're still going to have to worry about Josh Allen running it. So I think they're going to still, Gabe Davis should get his chances. And quietly, you look at his other lines. I mean, you look at receptions line sitting at three and a half, heavy heavily juices the over. You look at his receiving yards, 54 and a half. I strongly considered the receiving yards, but you look at his whole career, 
He's only had, I mean, whenever he gets the over in receiving yards, it's only been one game where he hasn't had a 25 or longer yard reception. This is Gabe Davis. Like I said, he's gonna make big plays. That's what he's known for doing. And if he's not gonna hit the receiving yards, probably not gonna hit his rece reception long. But still, I mean, there's an additional four games out there where Gabe Davis didn't hit his receiving yards, but hit this longest reception. All it takes is one catch, and Gabe Davis is known for going and getting those deep balls in. The Chiefs are defense that can give up that deep ball reception to opposing receivers. You look at Devontae Adams, two receptions last week that easily crushed this line. Two Tampa Bay Buccaneers the week before hit this line. Two Colts hit this line. Three Chargers hit this line. Two Cardinals hit this line versus the Chiefs secondary. We know the Buffalo Bills love throwing the ball. We expect Patrick Mahomes to at least be able to put up some points on the other side. We don't see this being a big blowout. So look, he can get it anyway. He could take a deep ball. He could take a crossing route. He can break a couple tackles and get 23 or more yards. I think he's certainly capable of getting it done. I love you, Gabe Davis. Go get it done. Over 22 and a half yards for his longest reception. I love you, Gabe. Let's go get that one done. Now, my final player prop before we get into the make it make sense category, which you'll understand when we talk about it. I'm going Jalen Waddle over 48 and a half receiving yards, minus 113 on FanDuel. Now, look, I'd probably play this up to 50 and a half, but let's let's get this out of the way. I got, I'm talking to you out there, Mike McDaniel, the head coach for the, the Dolphins. You got to get Jalen Waddle the ball. What are you doing? You look at the last two games, back to back games. 39 and 23 receiving yards. That's why you look at this line. It's at 48 and a half. You go back to a couple weeks ago, this line would have been about 65 and a half. So we're getting a great discount for a guy that had, you know, 69, 100, and like 105 yards in the first three games this season. I think he gets back on track because number one, Tyreek Hill, tad banged up, missed a couple practices, should be back out there, should be running around. Number two, the Vikings secondary isn't all that good. Minnesota allowed the 22nd fewest passing yards this season or the 10th most in the NFL. And the Vikings have allowed eight wide receivers to hit this over through five weeks. And they played, they allowed a Bears wide receiver to hit the over, which basically is equivalent to another five wide receivers. Sorry, Bears, you fans, you, you know your passing game is not all that. But I just look at a guy like Skylar Thompson who will be filling in for Tua Tagovailoa, who returns next week, and Teddy Bridgewater. He can't really game plan for a guy like Skylar Thompson. He came in and they're basically just fed, force fed the ball to Tyreek Hill bunch of shorter routes, but I think we're going to see them try to target Jalen Waddle here. There's no reason he shouldn't be getting at least north of four or five catches, at least six or so targets. I think they're going to show that because Tyreek Kill is going to be the number one game planner for the Vikings, and they're going to probably try to stop Raheem Mostert. But overall, Waddle's reception line is sitting at four and a half, even value on each side. So the books clearly expect Jalen Waddle to be active and be thrown the football. And when Waddle has had four or more receptions, hit this over in 13 of 16 career games with four or more receptions. I would still be catching the under on his receptions line if he still has a good chance of going over. We know Waddle, a guy that can hit this over in just one play, hopefully he has more than one play, but I think he'll get the ball in his hands. I don't expect him to put up another egg. I think they're going to put him out there and as at least going to give him some chances to succeed. Viking secondary is a team he can do it against. Give me Jalen Waddle over 48 and a half receiving yards. The line's a little bit too low for me. Now let's move on to make it make sense. Now the purpose of this category in this segment is talk about lines that don't make sense. Now as a reminder, do not bet these. I'm not saying, hey, go out there, put your house on these. These are not even liens, I would call them. This is just me kind of, we're just doing some research. You and me, everyone out there, we're just doing some research, looking at lines and seeing why are these lines at this. Let's talk about, we're all talking about completions prop. And the first one we'll start with, Carson Wentz, under 20 and a half completions. Now, yes, this game's already happened. And yes, we already know the result of this. But this one was the line that stuck out to me on Thursday because you looked at this line and you're like, why? You look at Carson Wentz, 25 or more completions in all five games this year. Got to hammer the over, right? Well, he ended up with 12 on Thursday night. So that's kind of what we're looking at in this series. You know, we're looking at lines that make no sense. This next one, Kirk Cousins, under 22 and a half completions. Look, this line's gone up to 23 and a half, reasonably so. But if you stick at 22 and a half, Kirk Cousins is 5 and 0 to the over. So why is the line still sitting at 22 and a half? Is he going to lay an egg? Is this going to be a Kirk Cousins, you know, collapse? I don't really know. I'm not saying you should bet it, but coming off 32 completions last game, I think he completed his first like 13 or 14 passes. Just something to monitor. Why is it so low? Should be more at like 25 and a half, but they really think he's going to crush this line. Another guy, Jacoby Brissett, looking at his under 18 and a half completions. You look at Jacoby Brissett's game line, 21 or more completions, four straight games at 18 in week one, finishing on the hook on the, on the underside. So why are we sitting at this line at, you know, 18 and a half? Is he not going to be throwing the balls at a big Nick Chubb game? I don't really know. Just another interesting line that I saw. I was like, this is interesting. Why is it 18 and a half? Shouldn't it be like 20 and a half, 21 and a half, where he's obviously been getting, you know, that 21 to 22-ish range pretty consistently? I don't know. And then the last one, Marcus Mariota, this one gives me PTSD. 
over 17 and a half completions. Now, I saw this line, and if you don't know, we took a Marcus Mariota completions prop earlier this year, took the over, and he hurt us good. I think he finished on the hook in that one. But that last three games, Mariota, 13, 7, and 14 completions. And now they're hitting, hitting you with a 17 and a half line. Is Marietta going to go out there and put on a clinic against the 49ers, one of the best defenses in the league? Is he just going to do a bunch of short throws? Is that how he gets his completions? He's under in four straight games. Do we just do people just keep hammering the under? I don't know. This is why we're doing this segment. We're going to track these. Last week, I think they went 3-0 or 0-3. I don't really remember 100%, but we'll track these ones to see how they do. Obviously, like I said, do not bet on them, please. Not These are just purely for research purposes. Just kind of want a couple of you guys like the segment, so it's back by popular demand. Maybe we'll do it next week in that parlays and player props video. But that's going to wrap it up. I appreciate you for tuning in. Here's the three player props we already talked about. Take a screenshot so you don't have to go back to your book. These are the three that we already talked about. And of course, I appreciate you guys as always. A reminder about those two videos. You can go check those out. They're linked up on the screen. And a reminder I thought about that prize fix free square with Stephen Curry, which is on Tuesday. We'll definitely talk about that again on the channel before that ends. And then we'll also, of course, sign up using our code COS for 100% deposit match. I'm Austin. I'm signing out. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.